Good morning, millennials, and welcome back to the toast. Happy Monday, and like that's disgusting. Let's just let's just. Say. Hey, you started the show with a slur. Yeah. Who are you, Shane Gillis? Literally. <laughs> Not only, like that's disgusting, and I don't want to just I don't want to minimize that because I have a lot like to be excited about. But maybe you could all just be excited for me. Like it's Monday, yes. But I'm here still in Florida when I was supposed to go home ages ago. And that's just always amazing. It is amazing. And we've been having a grand old time. We had such a fabulous weekend. If I came on here and did anything other than rave about it, like, may God smite me down. Yeah. We had such a wonderful weekend. So much sunshine. Claudia got an intentional 10 degree sunburn, but I got an accidental sunburn. And that's when you know like you're having a good ass time. Yeah, my mission this weekend was like to prepare myself for my trip to St. Bart's. And that means I went shopping, that means I went to the gym, that means I was trying to eat really healthy. And that also means I was like, let me get a little color. Now we're in Florida, not Hawaii. Like I literally, I was watching the UV index. It was a seven for like two hours at on Saturday. Other than that, it was like three, four, five. Really not bad. I did not wear sunblock because I was trying to get a tan. Like and yeah like that's on me and I feel like I never learn with sun like I always end up with a crazy sunburn I have like a million stories when me and men went to St. Thomas like I always am that girl and I never learn well you set out you accomplished your goals congratulations you played yourself I am a tomato like a just a positively ghastly tomato if you saw the picture on my Instagram I shared of my stomach I have definitely like some sort of you know, third degree burn on my stomach. Everywhere else, I'm like that classic post-vacation sunburn. It's like tingly. Yeah. My stomach, like I was actively up in the night in pain. My, That's really sad. I can't, like I can't wear clothing. That's why I'm actually so glad we're promoting our merch today. I need to wear like loose clothing. I'm in terrible pain. Like I'm in trouble. Although I am hoping by the time I get to St. Barth on Wednesday, when the burn was a acquired on Saturday so that's like four days I'm hope by the time I get to St. Barth not only does it, the pain subside like maybe it's turned into a tan and I could have accomplished the goal I set out to accomplish yeah that's the thing we want to promote sun safety here and no I made a mistake and you shouldn't get sunburn and you should wear sunscreen but just know if you have a sunburn like it will turn into a tan you just won't sleep you until the tan sleep no sleep till tan and please I, like every time I talk about my sunburn everyone's like try this put shaving cream on try vinegar like I'm really vinegar not, no like I listened to one of those dumb recommendations once and me and Ben ended up lathered in Greek yogurt which you know is my least favorite smelling thing on the planet um it didn't help it changed nothing and I was still in pain I just smelled so I'm really I'm not in the business of taking recommendations so d while you're typing your comment just delete delete like I'm not interested I will live with this pain I will hydrate I will you know, they say drink a lot of water, stay out of the sun. Like, I'm doing that. Like, no fakakta remedies, but please. let's not, let's not go down this negative path because we were talking about what a wonderful oh. weekend that we oh, had yeah, yeah, in yeah. the sun that, yes, did burn you, but also provided jolly good times. Yes. So to come on here on a Monday morning and say anything other than, you know, joyous things would be a crime. So not only can, can I, you know, I have to be positive for that. I have to be positive also because this is the week I finally go to St. Bart's and Ben is finally excited about it. He went to the outlet mall and like got himself a whole new wardrobe for $3 and he's overjoyed. So check weenie of the week on his way to queenie and third and most importantly in my opinion we have a merch launch this week week which is always just like great vibes here at the toast one because we don't have to put together outfits we're just like promoting our merch it's so great so true so we're like comfortable and stylish yeah two it's like a great community building moment everybody's always asking for merch and three like woohoo so if you're watching on youtube or looking at the pictures on Instagram, we are launching a bunch of items, but the main two items are these two different sets in the classic toasty colors, pink and green. Now the entire collection that we are releasing was built on the back of the set that Jackie's wearing. We've been designing this for so long. We've been holding onto it for so long. We wanted to release it at the perfect time. We are obsessed with this set. It's the girly set. It is a, would you say that's teal? I would say it's green if I am allowed a word. If we had like a pie chart. A counter a pie chart of how much you've spoken versus me since the show, you're 99%. Yeah, I feel like I like, took an Adderall. You know, I'm feeling like a little crazy. Like I could barely get a word in. Get your word count in. I'll take, I'll take a step back. You talk about your set. So we have the girly collection because we are the girlies. This is for the girlies and it's by the girlies. Let me just say one thing. This one's for the girls who've ever had a broken heart, who wish upon a toasty star. You're beautiful the way you are. To me, that song is representative of this collection. I'm sorry, continue. It is. So we love 
girly ting. So we have this green set. The girly on the chest is actually a patch, sewn on patch. So it's a little bit different than our usual. And then to complement it, we have this pale pink. You also have a patch on your leg. Oh, I also have a patch on my thigh that is keeping Streisand warm right now. I will toss them off later in the show so that you can see all of the details in the set. I'm wearing a size large as always, you know, could have taken extra small. I feel like I can't. Extra small. <laughs> I feel like I can't like talk about my size without making that joke. Okay, but the thing is, to be actually helpful, in the photo shoot that we had, I'm wearing the girly collection in a medium. And I really could have, maybe should have done a large. But with the, for some reason with this girly one, I don't want it so oversized. I wanted it more yeah. tailored. So I would do like my actual size, which these days is a medium. But if I was looking for like a little bit more of a baggy, the kind of airport look, I would do that in a large. Today, I am wearing this in a medium and it fits me perfectly. So this is the second set we're launching. It's more um, branded. For, this is for the toasters. You know, this yeah, one's this, for the girlies. This one's for the toasters. The OGs, it's classic toast colors, has toast embroidery on the chest. Last collection, we launched the same exact set in navy. So if you liked that, you loved her, this is her in more of a spring color. Yeah, my favorite color. I'm so excited about that set. It has oh, and pockets. It has pockets. The girly set has pockets too. Also, the girly set comes with a t-shirt that says girly. And if you're just looking at the naked eye of the still that we posted on our Instagram stories, you're like, oh, nice, a t-shirt. No, you guys, this, this t-shirt is-, is like game changing. You guys might not know, like we've literally, we never sell t-shirts because like- I don't like t-shirts. No, and the t-shirts that you buy from like merch and like swag, it's like, hey, oh, it's jail. It's like a prison. It's like your neck. Like, it's jail for your breasts. So we, it's jail for your breasts. So we were like, no, no, no. But so many people ask for t-shirts. So many people, we do a lot of sweats and a lot of people live in warmer weather. They're like, please, a t-shirt. So we spent the time finding a real shirt for real women. Yeah, it has like that oversized, like loose fitting vibe. It's just so cute. So you'll see that we'll wear it tomorrow, but it's also on our Instagram right now. We have a trucker hat for the girlies because truckers for the girlies. We also have mugs for the girlies. And so this is all for the girlies because you deserve it. So 10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow, which is Tuesday the uh, 27th. Oh no, yes, 27th. Uh, at shoptoastmerch.com, all of these items are gonna go live. The two sets, two mugs, a hat, a t-shirt, the whole collection. If you wanna preview it before you buy, all the photos will be on our Instagram. A lot of them are already up and we'll be sharing them throughout the day. Um, This one's for the girls. You know, Martina McBride wasn't lying when she said that. And I feel inspired by her. Yeah, she was ahead of her time. She was ahead of her time. I think we, um, like people will look back on this show and say we were ahead of our time. Yeah, I think they could already say that. Even like past years of seasons that we've done were ahead of their time. Agreed. Speaking of pink and cleany vibes, Turdy and I got matching manicures. And I cannot stop looking at your hands because they never looked better. So I actually, I had a nice manicure and you guys know, I recently changed, you know, ways. I used to be like a flesh colored manicure girl always. And one day I was just like, what if I just got a burgundy? And then of course, because I can't do anything just normally, now I only get burgundy. So we actually got a manicure like a week ago, a nice burgundy. I didn't know I was going to St. Bart's. And then I was like, you know, we're going to get manicures for St. Bart's. I got to do something crazy. So I was going to do like a classic, you know, I call it the Margot Fish color. My friend Margot Fish, she always gets like a light pink. It's like Mademoiselle, you know, everyone Ballerina knows. slippers. A ballerina ballerina farm. farm. Everybody knows those colors. I was like, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. And then I'm sitting next to Jack at the manicure place, which is so fun, by the way. It makes manicure so much more fun. Yeah, because I don't enjoy a manicure typically. Yeah, Jackie's it's hard for kind me. of crazy to get a manicure with. She has so many rules. She's like, well, I do this too. You do no cut cuticle, no lotion. No lotion, no hand massage. I don't like being touched like that's why a manicure is hard for me. It's a lot of hand holding. Yeah. Literally. Well, well, I said to Jackie, I'm like, cause I was, and cause my um, person who did my manicure was a man. He was amazing and then I was just like really realizing how I'm like holding hands with a man and maybe I don't notice it so much when it's a woman headline news Claudia Ash I seen holding hands with another man this weekend no. literally are you Justin Timberlake yes yes Ben is Jessica um it really is just like a 30 minute handhold with a stranger and it was so obvious to me that that's what was going on because I just felt more aware of this hand because it was a man's hand which is not common in the manicure industry um and I saw Jackie this girl next to me this like kind of gorgeous redhead getting this really gorgeous color and I totally copied it. Now I didn't get the same exact one because Jackie does dazzle dry, which is not gel. And I'm like a gel loyalist. And Jackie thinks it's so crazy that I do gel. And she said that machine with the lights is going to end up giving everyone hand cancer in 20 years. And we're all going to be like, I wonder why we all have hand cancer. It's because we were all doing like UV gel manicures. But 
until then, until the data comes out, me and my fire nails, this was a brand called D&D. But I also want to let you know the reason why I don't do gel manicures is not because of hand cancer. I told you that's like number eight, eight on, on the, the list. list of why I don't do them. What's number one? Number one is that it ruins my nails. By the time I take off the gel, I have like no nail left. It's so brittle and I'm starting from stubs. So let me tell you that used to be the case for me. Like seriously, every time it was so annoying. Your nails get, you know, um, stronger as you go. It's like survival of the fittest. And if you stay on track with your manicure schedule, like you will be good. Then number two reason, if I'm staying on track with my manicure schedule, then I need gel soak off, which I fucking hate. The removal of the gel, like they need to do better. It yeah. took so long yesterday because I had had three coats on. Like it took forever. Like that's really, I need the scientists to. Work on that. To work on that. Yeah. I, like me, like why can't they just make like a a, a solution, like a solvent. Yeah. That oh, like, yeah. That it only bends for that. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it, I give you that one. Yeah. What's my next one? Three through seven. There were seven. Um, number three. Oh, sometimes I don't like the way that gel like looks. It's a little thick. Okay, I feel I feel that too. That used to be an issue I had with gel manicures as well. I do think, you know, the companies and the manicurists like have figured it out because that's not an issue anymore. Do my nails look no, thick too? No, your nails look super beautiful. But yes, sometimes, and it's also like, what kind of like gross ass place are you going to? Sometimes like they've had these bottles for a hundred years. They like pee in them to make them last longer. And like you have these globs, 1000%. The place you took me to, they would never do that. Okay, so maybe... The cancer's number four. Okay. But I would say then number five is that the samples don't look like the color that you choose because we chose a nice color for you. Okay, I'm, I'm actually really glad we're having this conversation. <laughs> so that did happen to me. And I find there are multiple different ways that you can showcase a, uh, gel nail colors. And I have found like the best one. And Yes, a lot of times they have that silver ring with like a million acrylic nails on it. Like how am I supposed, like organization wise, that's a horrible method. Most places in the city have that because like they just throw it in a basket. Honestly, it's like the least pleasant experience. Your place had it on like a stick. It was still just like acrylic nails. It wasn't great. And you're right, like the colors did change. But I went to this place in the Hamptons, like I was just randomly in, the, like in West Hampton for the weekend. I went to this random nail place. It was probably the best manicure I've ever gotten in my life. And they showcased all the colors in a book. And they were just one, two, three, four. Like, it was so brilliant. And I took a picture on my Instagram and I was like, why doesn't everybody do this? Everybody was, we do do this. Like, okay, you shut up. You said do do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said do do, not me. Um, so they haven't, they haven't mastered that yet, but it's not a big deal. Like you just see, they always start on your pinky, you see the pinky, and then if you don't like it, they'll just take it off and do another color. Right, and I would just say, if I didn't love Dazzle Dry so much and it didn't solve all my problems, I would probably do gel because I've been getting regular manicures recently just because it's been easier until it's not and it was chipping like the next day. But I love Dazzle Dry and it works for me. If it didn't, I would probably do gel is really what it is. Okay, like get a gel manicure. Let me know what you think next time. And, Things have changed since you, your time. You get a Dazzle Dry manicure one time. There was too much riding on the manicure that we got together yesterday. Like, I wanted her to just use my, I brought my whole kit and caboodle of Dazzle Dry to the salon. But like if I didn't like it and it didn't work and it was chipping and I was in St. Bart's, like I would have been cursing your name. And after coming off such a great few weeks together, I didn't want to be in a fight. So I let it go. So we had an amazing weekend. We really did. Besides the manicure, we had so much family time. We were out in the sun with, you know, the pool and it was just fabulous. We watched so much content. Yeah. Jackie and I are finally caught up on Vanderpump Rules. Are we caught up? Yeah. Do we, we just stopped we, watching because it was... We only, I've only been here like for two episodes. We missed two episodes. Okay, and we watched And there's one tomorrow. Oh, great. We're caught up. So we're like caught up. Said. Honestly, watching Vanderpump Rules with your family, greater than watching it alone. Like it's a better show when you have someone to make fun of it with. Totally. We also watched... Um, SNL. SNL, which is going to be a story. We've been talking, I think, like the last week about Chingulus. Very excited. Hard to stay up, you know. Yeah, but we, we watched did it. Vanderpump Rules to stay up. We did it. We did it. Yeah, we're we're kind of mature like that. Yeah. And then we're going to watch Summer House, we said. Maybe yes. that's tonight. Summer House. But I think we missed an episode. We might have to catch up. Great. Yeah, we have a lot to do, like content-wise. We also have, I have to pack, like, I'm just getting so excited for my trip. It's just going to be fabulous. The sunburn, like, is try like, the sunburns try to bring me down, trying to make me not excited, but I can't not be excited. No, I don't want to ruin your trip. So don't. So shut your mouth. <laughs> but would you vlog it for us? Because we've all been on this journey together. Ooh, not you asking me that in public, like in front of the toasters. No, but be honest about your thoughts on vlogging. Like you my th it. Okay, so my thoughts on vlogging are- A trip. Yeah, well, vlogging in general, it is a lot of work. And when it's- um. When I'm like doing something productive, like a lot of people always ask me to do like try on hauls or packing 
um, vlogs. And it's like, I'm being productive packing. Like, sure, I'll vlog it too. It doesn't bother me at all. It's actually really fun. But when you're trying to when live I'm your trying life to relax and, the clock. and enjoy, I find vlogging to be like, not like it would be a good vlog. I'll think about it, but also like just follow me on Instagram, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think we do deserve a bit of content from your trip. I'll say that. Okay. And I also want to say what we haven't spoken about that we did on Friday was we did the best vlog of all time. The best, most productive vlog of all time. T B V O A T. Tib Vot. Claudia raided my closet. We went through all of my tings, all of my vacation items. She tried on everything that she liked and everything that I forced her to try on. Uh, it was the pillaging of Jackie O's closet. Now, I've never really went through your closet because we've never been the same size. And let me tell you, it is a gold mine. Like, I've always known you're an investor in things. Like, that's like a running joke we have. But it really made me, like, think about my own closet. How, like, for 10 years, you have invested. And you have so much to show for it. It's not like, oh, we always joke, like, Jackie gets nice things. Like, you research, you thrift the real, real. Like, you really work it. And when I went into your closet, it wasn't just, like, crap from Amazon. Like, it was good things that you've had for 10 years. Like, yeah, there were things from college in there. That I took. Yeah. Like, that are good enough for me to take to St. Yeah. It's Like, it was really impressive. And I was honestly inspired. Like, I will think differently about, you know, how, what I bring into my closet. Like, does this serve me? Will I want this in 10 years? Will right. it last in 10 years? Right. It was really inspiring. I think that was a takeaway for a lot of people. Oh, I'm so glad. From the vlog. The vlog, they're like, they're saying it's the best vlog of all time. But they are. And it really was. A lot of people are also just kind of marveled um, by your generosity of spirit and your willingness. Like there was nothing I said, can I take that you didn't say yes to? Like you were so generous and a lot of people were really shook by that. Like, could it be me, you know? And it was just kind of like a beautiful, beautiful vlog. And for me, it was so helpful because I ended up with a whole wardrobe. I did go to the mall yesterday and like buy some things, but I like I didn't need anything. If I just took everything from your closet, I would be the best, girl, best dressed girl in St. Bart's without even like spending a dollar. Yeah, I'm so excited for the content, the pictures. Yeah. You owe it to all of us. I do. And what's so great is that I'm going on vacation with Ben, who's the worst photographer of all time. But I'm also going on vacation with Taylor and Taylor. And Taylor's wife, Taylor Donahue, is, is a creative. She's a creative. She is like a videographer. She she knows angles. Like she's a woman. Like the content will be fire. Oh, exciting. Yes. So how are you? I'm good. I mean, I've been with you, so you know, I know. how I am. But I'm excited for you. I'm excited for this week because it'll be great shows, merch collection. I'm going away and it's just best of all worlds. So reminder that episodes this week uh, will be ending on Wednesday. So we've got a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday episode and uh we're back on tuesday so sorry about that sorry about that but patreon is on fire right now because claudia and i have been together we're doing another patreon today mm -hmm. so that we can leave you with gifts we'll while release we're gone. it on thursday that's we're the last like day of the month who are going on vacation who do you see what morgan stewart does yeah she writes like makes a book for her kids every time she goes on a trip like showing her kids what she's going to be doing that's like us on the toast like we're just leaving you one thing for every day to cheer you up while we're gone so patreon.com slash toast great i think now without further ado yeah i'm glad we dilly dally because i feel like the stories are crap the stories are weirdly crap for a monday mm -hmm. but you know us we don't let that hold us back so without further ado it is time for the crap stories that you need to know and the crap stories that you don't need to know are brought to you by sonos which is a new sponsor here and i'm thrilled about it our like, weekend was brought to you by sonos oh my god i like i understand the hype people are like what's so different about sonos in my apartment okay so let me just tell you jackie and i uh, recently got the move to which is a new item from sonos you can get it at sonos.com and the move to with all new one is a powerful and portable smart speaker for listening all around your home and beyond you connect it to wi-fi at home or bluetooth for listening on the go and you can stream music podcasts audiobooks all your favorite services so if you want to listen to the toast like you can do that on sonos move to tunes itself like magic so it sounds great whether you're listening inside or outdoors don't worry about the elements this powerful and durable speaker can weather sun, splashes, sand, and accidental drops with ease. Enjoy easy, easy control with the Sonos app, Apple AirPlay 2, and your voice. Mix and match with other Sonos speakers to create the ultimate sound system for immersive home theater and multi-room music. I just want to say, I have Sonos in my house mm -hmm. built into the ceilings that I love. I use all the time. And we didn't do it outside. outside. And I was like preparing to try and find how to figure it out. But then Sonos became a sponsor and they sent us the move too. And I have one speaker that I put like on my patio and the entire, the entire backyard. backyard is covered. Everybody's listening. It sounds the same to everyone. It's not like super loud in 
one place and then you can't hear it when you walk away. It's evenly distributed and I don't need to get speakers for my patio anymore. And it's like the no, it's best a, thing ever. It's actually crazy. I have three in my house, one in each of the bedrooms and one in the living and dining kitchen area. And where mm, even- They sent you three. When mm. you walk through, I did ask for more actually. Like I got one, I was like, I'm gonna need two more. Um, I also got like a sound bar for my TV like that I'm, I haven't installed yet. Like I was being like a- Buzzer. I was being like a, a schnurra as we would say, but like, I don't care. These things, like you walk through the house, you wouldn't know that there's not, it's not coming out of the ceilings. It's really amazing. Visit Sonos.com to learn more. That's the move to today's episode is also brought to you by Macy's. Cause you know, Easter is coming up and Easter is one of those holidays times of year where you just like need a lot of stuff, like for your family, for your home, for your kitchen, clothing. So between, um, with Easter happening this year, it's happening early. So get ready for the Easter bunny on Sunday, March 31st. Like that's like literally a month away. So from pastel outfits for the whole family to brunch ready serveware, Macy's has you covered. Macy's also has Toys R Us Easter basket goodies. So from books to stuffed animals and even slime, you can find it all in store and online at Macy's.com. And their newest restwear brand, State of Day, follows you from sunrise to slumber and all the moments in between. So um, Macy's just launched a new uh, restwear brand called State of Day. If you're going straight from your morning cup of coffee to walking the dog, if you're just throwing on a cozy cardigan, or you're about to hop on a Zoom, State of Day has cozy fits for everything. They've got essentials like pajamas, t-shirts, robes, cardigans, silky sets, and more. So you can check out the new brand, State of Day, at macy's.com slash state of day, S-T-A-T-E-O-F-D-A-Y. Also super cute, just to have like matching cozies with everyone in your house. You never know when like a picture is going to strike. You always just want to look your best. And the state of day um, cozies are really well made. They're really cozy and they're super cute too, which you shouldn't have to give up looking cute just because you're being cozy. So that's Macy's.com slash state of day. And then for everything you need for Easter, just head to Macy's.com or head uh, in store to the Macy's nearest you, which I actually went to yesterday while shopping for some shapewear, control top underwear for my trip coming up which I'm very excited about. Um, today's episode is also brought to you by AG1. Taking care of your health isn't easy, but it should be simple. And that's why for the last year, we've been drinking AG1, no exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day. Makes you feel energized, makes you feel focused, nourished, strong, ready. You guys know people in our family, like seriously, we take a bullet for AG1. And so funny, um, I texted Taylor and Taylor. I'm like, by the way, I know you guys weren't planning on being away for this song. So if you need me to bring you anything, like, fresh underwear, like something, water, like, let me know. I'll bring it to you. Just let me know. And Taylor John, he was like, I ran out of AG1. Like, please bring it. So the Shapiro's gave me like a whole big bag of theirs. I'm taking it down. People are obsessed. Like it really is going to become a fundamental part of your routine. Going to make you feel so energized, ben so too. focused. When ben, he gets I mean, into my kitchen in the morning, looks like the Grinch has been in there with his green traces all around. Ben, but it dry, by the way, my <laughs> countertop at home is black. <laughs> I still see it. Like it drives me nuts. Like get the whole thing in the bottle. What's wrong with yeah, you? Yeah. So that's a Ben problem. That's a Ben, not an us problem. If there's one product we want to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why we've, we've partnered with them. If you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash toast. That's what Olivia gave me the travel packs. So much easier than like bringing the scooper with you. Genius. That's drinkag one ag in the number one dot com slash toast check it out drink ag one dot com slash t-o-a-s-t thank you la you're welcome our first story award shows this weekend in which it seemed there were a number Many. first was the sag awards the 2024 that one i'm familiar with sag awards yeah i feel like every time people watch the sag awards they're surprised by how like star studded star studded and good they are and sometimes funny and mm -hmm. i feel like people have lower expectations for them so they wind up actually like being good plus the sag has been in the news all year so i think it was kind of it's been a big year for the astra it's been a big year for the astra and i'm sure if you watched it, which I didn't, Me like either. I'm sure they made note of that. I'm sorry, like you can have all the award shows that you want. Like I'm watching the big three, mm -hmm. you know, Grammys, Oscars, is, Golden Globes. For the last few years, you've actually watched SAG Awards. I've never seen the SAG Awards no, in my life. You did, you watched them last year. No, I didn't. I'm telling you, I've never met Because like a couple times on the show, it'll be a Monday and you'll be like, I watched the SAG Awards last night and they were What so the hell good. are you talking about? I've never, I've literally, you're like, you're, Libel? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just, I'm... Jackie, I've never, like, what a weird room. What's wrong with you? Like, I'm... She's starting rumors I'm about I'm gonna me. find you. Find it. it. Do the research. You won't find it. I'm gonna find it. I've never seen the SAG Awards. I don't know what you guys are talking about. And I pray to God that that's true. <laughs> like because if somebody splices this clip... 
with me two years ago saying I watched the SAG Awards and they were so good like I would be mortified and nobody will ever take me seriously no, there's something about the SAG Awards where after you watch them a few days later your memory is wiped clean <laughs> and you feel as though you've never seen the SAG Awards before oh my god it's a SAG after effect it's a SAG AFTRA effect. So for me, like the stars were starring, the big ones were there because it is a very credible. Yeah, no, and everybody's like now supporting SAG again in the industry. So it's like big for the stars. For me, it's an opportunity to talk about SAG AFTRA, which you're never gonna pass up, never in a million years. Even though it wasn't until like Fran Drescher walked the carpet looking for a standing ovation that I realized that the SAG Awards are related to SAG AFTRA. Listen, she. Like, what I would do for for Fran Drescher, do you know Fran Drescher's history? I only just recently found this out because this documentary, like they, somebody put it on TikTok in 10 different parts and I ended up watching all 10 different parts. Like a crazy story about what happened to Fran Drescher at like the peak of her fame. She was robbed in her home. No. She was robbed in her home and she was raped in her home in front of her husband. What? It's a crazy, crazy story. And she talks about it um, somewhat openly in this interview. It's a crazy story yeah and it actually really ended up she said like destroying her marriage like her husband was just overcome with like he had to watch the whole thing like so overcome with guilt so overcome with trauma it's a crazy story oh my god i know no i didn't know that what's the it's like a famous hollywood story and so it was like a tiktoker put together a temporary no, like this happens on tiktok like you want to watch it like they'll throw you clips from a movie and they'll Wait, put up, so what was the movie it was this document it was like this interview slash documentary i will find it i'm not 100 percent sure it definitely looked like it was filmed a really long time ago oh my god yeah but that's like it's one it's like one of those like famous hollywood things like that you know at the time it was huge so i just also have to say like fucking love for Drescher for a million reasons and if i was on that carpet i would have given her a standing ovation too that must be like so but fabulous also she's the queen of sag that's why must have been like she must have been looking she forward was like to this all year them through the year it's probably like a something she looks forward to every night every year this year in particular because she's kind of like their savior she got them the deal you know yeah no it's like when you plan the school dance and then you show up and you're like you're welcome it's also kind of just like your bat mitzvah oh for sure yeah like every, all eyes are on you <laughs> do you think she did like a candle lighting ceremony on the red carpet I think she could have. And I would have stood there. The thing is, we will never know what she did or didn't do because we didn't watch. We didn't, but we do support Fran. We do. And we did see pictures from the red carpet because the A-listers were there, the ones who are working the circuit this year, such as Margot Robbie, Anne Hathaway. Oh, Anne Hathaway. We need to talk about her. It's insane to me that- Barbara Streisand got an award. Not my angel- Streisand, but Barbara did. Yeah, and she used it, you know, to talk about anti-Semitism, which was nice. Long overdue, Barbara. You're kind of like the most famous Jewish person, but it's fine. I'm not going to complain. I saw a snippet from what she said, and maybe there was more after where she went harder, but it was giving nothing what I saw that she said, and she accepted the award from Bradley Cooper, who's dating a notorious anti-Semite. So all in all, nothing was given to the Jewish people. Wait, I was, what did you say right before Streisand? And Hathaway. Oh, the stars were out. So all the people who are doing the circuit and the people yeah. that are doing the circuit, and I don't want to complain because I'm loving seeing Charles Melton like get his flowers. We know him from Riverdale. He's so handsome. I just love him. And he's the actor in May, December, which is Julianne, H- not Huff, Julianne Moore, Natalie Portman, and Charles Melton. So they're all like at all these award shows. And I just think it's so crazy that like that movie is like considered like good like it's one of the best movies of the year it was like the biggest piece of shit i've ever seen like i hated it and charles melton like i loved and actually thought he his acting was extremely good but like my god could the bar be lower like that's slumdog millionaire you know what i mean yeah crap crap different strokes for different folks nah no some things yes art is subjective but some things are factual that movie sucked damn well but was- i just i want to say i love seeing our riverdale king at all these award shows like i hope this really propels him like he needs to like i love this route for him all the riverdale kids did something different him going like serious acting never would have guessed love it because also it's like an indie movie because there was also the independent spirit awards this weekend. it's not an indie movie it was on netflix but maybe it was made by an indie production company okay the spirit awards were this weekend which like, I, I can't. which i think is for indie films and the only reason why I know about is because A.D. Bryant was the host and we watched a clip this morning. She was very funny. Of some of her shtick for her opening monologue and it was genuinely funny. Yeah. Um, when I thought saw that the spirit, I saw like a picture. <laughs> I saw a picture 
of the Spirit Awards and I saw the only person in the picture was Ben Platt. And just like, be, because I saw Ben Platt and because I saw Spirit Awards, I thought it was like a LGBTQ award. Yeah. Like Spirit Awards, I would never guess tight, like just based on the name is an award show for movies. No, I'm only guessing. I actually, this was a guess because I saw something that said the Independent Spirit Award. It should have been called the Indies. And then I just assumed, honestly, I'm not even guessing. I just assumed it was for independent movies, but that could be totally wrong. It was also the Producers Guild Award this weekend. The PGA, oh my God, I saw it was PGA Awards for movies. I said, what? Golf? What? No, Producers Guild, Brie Larson. Like, I can't. I can't. This is so, it's genuinely wasteful. Like it is. The Spirit Awards. The name is that a new? I never. That's one I never heard before. Not even like SAG. Never. Like it's might as well. It sounds like the Loser Awards. No, <laughs> like the word Spirit. Is I just know. a sad word. I completely agree. Especially in front of award. Like yeah, it's giving. Like it's, it's giving it, you tried. It's giving like honorable an, mention. An intangible level of success. Yeah. Um. Agreed. And the PGAs as well. Like. Love the producers, you know, they deserve their moment. Do they need a whole award show? I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, there was a lot, a lot of red carpets this weekend. And I actually do love seeing red carpet content in terms of like people's dresses and stuff. So that's good. Yeah. So we were fed. We were well fed. If you were interested in dining in that cuisine. Right, 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 right. Are you ready for our next story? Like desperately. <laughs> in which others were fed on TV this weekend. As Shane Gillis hosted the SNL. Uh, the SNL? I also called him Shane Gillis. <laughs> so Shane Gillis hosted SNL this weekend, which as we discussed last week was very big news because he was fired from the show before he even stepped foot on set a few years ago. And now he came back as host. And it was very interesting because it's so it's so funny to me how like SNL is like the pinnacle of comedy. Like if you're a comedian, you do stand up like SNL is like the golden. And it really, I feel is like not reflective of modern comedy like it's very pc and yes they always had to like abide by like certain standards because they're on cable but like as a um brand they don't really push the envelope and that's what comedy is supposed to do is like make you uncomfortable and that's why someone like shane gillis and i and i feel like this happens every now and then like when when chappelle went on like these are comics who are literally the antithesis of snl and it's like they're there to make people uncomfortable and snl doesn't do that like snl is very just sort of like like, like a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Lame sauce? Sure, okay, yeah, lame sauce. And two words. I have to say, I loved Shane Gillis's monologue. It was excellent. I imagine watching it at home and watching it in person were two very different things because you can see the audience like not loving it. Like you can hear, I mean, excuse me. I didn't, I couldn't hear it. I heard laughs. I only knew they weren't loving it because he, Kept, kept saying it. And so I almost wish he didn't because then people were like, he bombed. Like I, one of my least favorite things is movies when comics are like, oh, you don't like that joke? It's like, girl, just move on. Like it wasn't good. Like No, and it's not just for the people. If it was just, you know, not on TV right. and people aren't liking it, yeah, address it. But like us at home, we have no idea what it sounds like in there. So it is like one of my least favorite things when people do that. However, I feel like it really highlighted like how different like comedy fans are from SNL fans because mm -hmm. comedy fans tuned in because Shane Gillis is huge he had one of the biggest specials on Netflix last year and his podcast is really popular and he's like one of like a, a great uh, best-selling touring co comedian like so comedy fans were tuning in for him and the SNL fans who were like people in the audience who were just so like rigid and like serious and like woke for lack of a better word I hate that word um they weren't like into it and then he drops the r word <laughs> and honestly i'm so curious if they knew he was gonna do that i feel like legally like compliance wise like you can't say that word on tv but really? it's live i feel like you can because it's also it's like a technical word like it means something. actually yeah what if you're just like using it in you know the the dictionary yeah sense i mean they said it on uh entourage all the time in the beginning and friends they never use it on friends. You say that they say stuff like that. I literally never said that. Really? What word did they use on friends that was surprising to you? No, like nothing. They like never push the envelope. In, in any but there sort. was a time when really using a word wasn't like pushing the envelope. Yeah, no, but they, no, it's it wasn't friends. Then maybe it was like something else that didn't age well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, on Sex in the City, Samantha says, oh, well, I'm not going to say it, but she says a word, not the R word, the T word. Oh. That rhymes with, should I, granny, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Um, That's what no, I so when you go back and watch old shows, yes, there was a time where things like that were totally fine. 
that is not today. And no. so for Shane Gillis to have dropped the R word in his monologue, that was crazy. But so much of his stand up, and a lot of people are talking about how he used like a bit from his Netflix special on SNL. And like, why would he do that? Um, a lot of comedians who go on SNL use their material. Yeah. Like you work on the material for so long and you workshop it, like for, for the most people possible to see it. And you're in front of a new audience. You want to lead with what's best for you. And I think he did change a little bit of it enough because I think I watched his special. I don't know if I watched the whole thing, but I've heard that, like some of those jokes before and I seen his special but I've also like seen clips because it keeps going yeah. like, viral um and I still enjoy it felt a little different and I still enjoyed it and it was like right for the moment because he's also introducing himself to people yeah yeah so I thought it was fine I remember when Amy and Schumer I feel was like on he, like, she did that too when he got the gig he was like I want to go on SNL and say the r word yeah, and yeah I'm gonna find a way to do it I also was really just tuning in and waiting to see how they would address um the firing the firing and they did at the very very top of the show very briefly and I honestly thought it was perfect because it was so funny he's like yeah i got fired because like you know i don't think he actually said he's like i got fired he said i'm not supposed to be here like i actually got fired from the show please don't look it up please he's like you can google it but please don't which is so funny and like really perfect i didn't need anything more than that and then he went on to do this monologue that i thought was hysterical especially because i don't feel like i'm his target demo i feel like his target demo is ben Mm -hmm. and ben was dying especially at the bit um about how like when you're a young boy your mom is your best friend. You're essentially like your mom's gay best friend. And then one day something happens and you guys are like, you don't fuck with each other anymore. And that was totally bad growing up. Like I could see like just him and his mom have been like, they still are Singing so close. Shania Twain in the but, car. But like Ben is like girly in a lot of ways. And I think it's literally because he was his mom's best friend for so many years. And he was just cackling. And honestly like that, I don't think anybody has... And people, what's so annoying too is people go on SNL, mostly the hosts are not comedians, they're like actors. So they don't really do like traditional stand-up in their monologue. They do like skits and they bring people out and they do singing songs and as like a show that's supposed to be all about comedy like it was nice for the opening monologue to be a monologue and really to have it be stand-up it was very good and I loved it yeah I really like the monologue staying up oh my god it's so late the way it's like New Year's Eve geez um and then I was like I'm staying up to watch St. Gillis on SNL and then the cold open started I was like oh shit I have to watch SNL yeah Jackie didn't watch the episode I did I I stayed up through the monologue and then I was really tired so I went to sleep and the opening sketch was just so dreadful that it wasn't like I need more of this it wasn't enticing no so I watched the whole episode and I think Shane did a great job and I could definitely see that there were sketches where like he his influence was because they were better than the standard SNL stuff but it still like wasn't good and yeah. it's because like SNL really like it's not good like right. and, and it's just not um and there were a, it's always and this happens a lot I feel like the pre-recorded like commercial sketches are always so good but that's like okay so do a pre-recorded show like right. there's no need for this whole thing to be live and the really I think the funniest one was um and I didn't even know about this we talked about this on the good guys but last week and it was in the weekend update too were like the trump sneaker things so shane gillis did like a pre-recorded commercial thing about the trump sneakers where it's like mike you know that movie <laughs> that's the best movie of all time where he puts on the sneakers and he becomes michael jordan so it was like he was just this random guy i think he was like an accountant shane gillis and he had like blonde hair and when he, he bought the sneakers and when he put them on he became trump and he was like right he was like no i'm right i'm right it was very funny very clever very topical like yeah that's what snl should be doing and shane gillis does a really good trump it was very oh and then they had the guy in the sketch the guy who always does the trump impersonation they were like in person it was like an impersonation off oh that's funny it was funny like i was like oh my god this is funny thank you that's funny yeah i'm glad he did a trump because he does like a thing in his special Special. where he like imitates him and it's so good and i said i think that's why they hired him from snl a few years ago because he would have been like a great go-to for every show if he were the trump and he does such a good job got it so that's why like I was hoping that he would do one last night because mm-hmm. he does it so better than anyone I've seen. I actually, you know what? But in the impersonation off, I actually thought the other guy was just as good, maybe oh, better. Really? Yeah, it was just funny. Like that's the type of I have shit. To go, I'll watch that. I'll watch some of the clips. Actually, I would love to know like what the SNL ratings are. Like, is it considered like a success? The show in general? Yeah, like ratings wise. I'm sure, like everything else, they're lower and lower over time, but enough to keep doing it. Like, are they looking to shake it up? No, because they don't. They don't. But like them bringing on Shane Gillis and them letting him on- say the R word, like that to me signals a new era. No? Yeah. 
No, it's not a new era. But I think like every once in a while, sure. Like bloom where you're planted, whatever. Because when you look back on like the history of SNL, like it was for so many years, like the Chevy Chase years, like this crazy place. No, now it's just like the mainstream. Yeah, just like regurgitate. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. So it was fun to tune in and see um, like something so different and so crazy. And I have to imagine, like I know every comedian was like posting, promoting it. I have to imagine like his ratings were excellent. But also he has a huge audience on his own. I'm sure they all tuned in. We're not even part of his audience. We tuned in. Like I think uh, it probably did good in the ratings. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, it was was an exciting time. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Three? Three. Yeah. Which is exciting for you and I. Oh my God, baby, you and I. You and I, you, you and I, oh, Turdy, I'd rather die. Me too, bitch. Me too, bitch. Without you and I. Try. You and try. You, you and try. Oh, Bruno, I'd rather die. That's such a good song. So good. Well, our next story is really interesting news for us and I want you to listen hear me out oh Glenn Powell says he and his anyone but you co-star Sydney Sweeney are reading scripts together looking for their next big project could anyone but you co-stars Glenn Powell and Sydney Sweeney be the next Julia Roberts and George Clooney oh I love this the duo's work on the past I wouldn't say Julia Roberts and George Clooney I would say Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson but continue another one but I think uh, allegedly Emma Stone Ryan Gosling according to this like George Clooney and Julie Roberts did it first. That, that's new. I don't, news I don't even know that. Yeah. And I guess that's why it was a big deal when last year they like they did, did a that movie crap together, movie. Yeah. And that's why people were excited because they like do stuff together. I don't think people were excited, but continue. Um, their work on the past romantic comedy just brought in a record to breaking two hundred and million do- two hundred and million dollars. Um, so a million dollars and twenty cents. <laughs> No, it's 200 mil. Yeah. Thus setting the two sum up as a bankable pair that audiences might be ready to watch fall in and out of love over and over. So what's next for the couple that saved rom-coms? More scripts, according to Glenn Powell. He stopped by Variety on the red carpet at the SAG Awards and said, when you find somebody that you really jive with, Sydney is so easy to work with and so fun. We're definitely trying to find the next thing. Please send us all the scripts you got. Oh. You know we're here for it. It's okay, been- so we need a book turned into a movie that features the two of them. Wait, you're obviously thinking of a book and I can't I'm remember. I'm thinking of our movie from Friday. Oh, okay, sure. But like, what about a real script that already exists? Like, what's a movie oh. that we're, what's a book that we're waiting, like a romance book that we're waiting? It happened one summer, even though they're not of the elk of that book. Like, I'm sorry, he's too skinny to play. Wait, Jackie. He's not a, a Jackie. he's not a cold sea a fisherman, fisherman working on an oil rig. It happened one summer. Off the coast of Pacific Northwest. Like, he's not. Could they be Violet? No, no, and Xander, they couldn't. They couldn't. Like, what is a, a book we're waiting and like we're always like thinking about casting people in. I mean, not again, not them, like Seven Husbands. No, not them, not them. Just like a classic cult romance novel. Colleen Hoover. No, no, nothing. Honestly, like, first of all, it happened one summer, like it's over. Why she could so be like a oh, snob from be. LA. He can, um, Claudia. Yeah, he, like he hair and makeup be. and he could buff up. Like, Claudia, he couldn't no, be. No, he couldn't be like this humble fisherman. He's like a pretty boy. He no, you're right. He couldn't be this humble fisherman. No, he couldn't be Let's a humble fisherman. Let's look at Goodreads and see. Like what they're turning into a See novel. what we've loved. But I was really thinking phone a friend, even though he's really not the nerd who takes off his glasses. Oh, by the way, he is not the nerd who takes off his glasses and everybody realizes but she's handsome. But she's so the girl. She the is so. The popular girl from high Jackie, school who's we've, using the old nerd. We've got our Mandy or whatever. <laughs> okay here are the books that i've rated five stars that like i need them to turn um, oh go by rating good call yeah that's how i always do it if they ever did one true loves by taylor jenkins no no i don't like it i don't like it Hmm. oh i mean Hmm. this is harder than i thought so far oh before we were strangers you read that yeah the girly with red hair at nyu yeah no it's not them no it's not them One Day in December. That was a good book. You didn't like it. Oh my God. That was the worst book on the planet. That's so crazy. Wait, no. That book was fine. What's the one that like was a romance novel that ended up being about 9-11? Excuse? By Jill. I literally remember it. Hold on. I just need to find the name of this book so I can tell you guys to never read it. Excuse? The Light We Lost, Jill Santopolo. It's a cute romance. 9-11. Excuse me. Oh my gosh. I never read that. Um, but like a Sophie Kinsella, even though you haven't read all of them, would be cute. 
Yeah, I just think like anybody, like a Reese, someone, need, Reese needs to get in there, you know? Reese needs to get in there. I think a dream team would be Reese, Glenn, and Sid. Mm -hmm. Love. Yeah. This and is maybe, exciting that they're going to be like a duo. I like that. Maybe an Ellen Hildebrand. Oh, also because like Euphoria is never coming back? Question mark? I feel like they keep saying 2025. All these people are going to be in such different places. I feel like they're literally just going to let the show end. I don't think because so. Because of like the toxic workplace and then the SAG strike, like... I don't know what I don't think they're just gonna let it end like everyone peep audiences included but also just like industry they just all like love the show too much it's just weird like how it got here it went from being the biggest show on tv to like them nobody getting back to work they'll go they'll go they'll go well it frees her up and I kind of love her becoming like a Matthew McConaughey Kate Hudson type I want to watch this movie so do I by the way I keep like meaning to but it's not like I like I'll watch it when it comes on demand it might already be on demand now no, I think it was in it was in it's still in theaters. Too. That's what that's what the two hundred million thing. They just surpassed two hundred million in ticket sales. But sometimes things are in theaters and you can watch them at home, like that for thirty dollars. That is true. I like that. I like I love that accessibility. Yeah. yeah, distribution. I think that's cute. Like I like them becoming like a a duo. A duo. Me too. Are you ready for our next story? Is it number four? It is number four. Is it the next story that's brought to you by the Firmers Dog? Yes. So the farmer's dog was founded by two dog lovers who decided to reimagine pet food from the ground up. And this new year, the easiest healthy habit to start is one for your dog. The farmer's dog makes feeding real healthy dog food easy and convenient. Your dog will absolutely love it. It is smart, healthy pet food that you can feel good about feeding your dog. So quit the kibble and kick the cans So and start fresh. The farmer's dog makes and then delivers fresh, healthy dog food right to your door. It's developed by vets, it's nutritionally balanced, and it's made from real meat and vegetables. And it's made to the safety standards of human food. It's really the best option for dogs at all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real healthy food. Traditional dry and wet dog food options are super processed. They can use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to, and they are extremely difficult to portion accurately. And the farmer's dog is not just fresh, higher quality food. They also are gonna send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This will make it easier to help your dog maintain their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full healthy life. Dogs at a healthy weight can live up to two and a half years longer than overweight dogs. A fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits from healthier coat and skin to fresher breath, even digestion, smaller, better poops. A healthy diet isn't just important for us humans. It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old, it's always the right time to begin investing in their health and that means more happy, happy healthy, and full years together. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash toast. Plus you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash toast to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by Say Beauty, which is so perfect because I'm wearing my Say Beauty today. So Say Beauty is an award-winning clean and planet positive makeup brand sold, sold exclusively at Sephora. I feel like a lot of people find Say Beauty for like different reasons. I found it because so many of their products were going viral, like their glowy gel, the cream bronzer that I just like started to buy a lot of their products. Whereas I feel like someone like Jackie finds it because they're always looking for like clean beauty. And then you end up staying because the products are amazing. Sometimes it's like when you go to clean beauty, it's like sadness. Not say. Say is the opposite Not of sadness. Say. And they have several award-winning best-selling products, including a Best of Allure winner, the Slip Tint SPF 35 Tinted Moisturizer, uh, their Dew Blush, and their Glowy Super Gel, which was the first product I ever tried from. Say it's the best. It's like a gel-like, almost like a serum, but a little bit more thick. And you put it under your makeup and it gives your makeup this like enhancing brush fright glowy look you know mm. say refers to themselves as the clean complexion experts because each makeup product is meticulously crafted with sustainability in mind and it's packed with good for you ingredients they're leaving out over 2,000 ingredients that are deemed potentially harmful to skin the glowy super gel is the ultimate effortless no makeup makeup glowing product it is a multi-use illuminator that hydrates and brightens skin for a fresh dewy look when applied the skin immediately feels refreshed and looks lit from within without chunky glitter or shimmer and I just want to make a shout out to the cream bronzer that I really love and the brush that comes with it. It's the best brush. Um, highly recommend. I actually went to Sephora yesterday and I almost bought another one, but mine here is full. I don't know what I was doing. Um, so Sephora is where you can find all the Say Beauty products. Say is spelled S-A-I-E. It is fabulous. It is clean. It is planet positive. It is award winning. And they are the clean complexion experts. You can shop now at Sephora online or in store. Highly recommend a lot of their products. Also love that tinted moisturizer. Should have worn it over the weekend because it has SPF 35 in it. Yep. That's on me. Love that one. 
Our next story, Olivia Rodrigo mm. kicked off her tour and shared how she celebrated her 21st birthday. I love Rodrigo. Is that what I said? Yeah. But that's her name. Rodrigo. Oh, Olivia Rodrigo. I think I that said. That was right. Yeah, I think I said that. Yeah. Um, she said, shared how she celebrated her 21st birthday by buying cigarettes and a six pack of beer. Though, of course, she said, I didn't consume it, of course, but I just bought okay. it because I could. So Olivia Rodrigo is having an identity crisis where she's like trying to shake like her good girl because it, a lot of people, there's actually a lot of talk about her tour opening night. It was in Palm Springs. It looked amazing. She wears like kind of like skimpy outfits and she like curses a little and she like kind of grabs her boobs like in some of her um, like choreography and like you know the you know the move where like you kind of rub your vagina like you just you know and so a lot of people are shook because she's really um she's not Disney she hasn't been on Disney in many years but those are her like OG fans and the girls who the people who go to see her show like are everyone loves her like Ben of course but the core fans are like these kind of young I would say like preteen girls um and she's trying to shake that image you know she is not she's not your She's not, you know, your mom's pop star, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, this is another layer of that, you know? But then she's like, not so crazy. I mean, I didn't smoke them. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. I do feel like it's something that every, like, former Disney person has to confront, like... And she's doing it, I think, in, like, not a crazy, like, not Miley Cyrus in the Dead way, Pets ways. Right, and I didn't even, like, see some of that stuff. But I feel like... It's very subtle. It's, yeah. And I think it's good to, you know, start to evolve mm -hmm. as an artist, but read the room and... and who are the people in the audience? And but just, it's like everyone. That's the thing. Like, how do you tailor a show when, like, your core, core, core audience, you're right, is, like, these Disney girls. But then, like, you blew up and people like my husband are going to your show. Yeah. And, like, the footage I saw, like, I saw Chris Olsen, who's, like, this 30-year-old man go. Like, how, how do you balance that? Well, then she just has to be Olivia, whatever that is. Well, and I think what we're seeing is, like, her outfits are very, you know, small. You know, she's wearing a lot of underwear and tights. Yeah. She's wearing, like, a little shirt, and she, like, lifts up her shirt, and, you know, she shows her bra at one I point. I didn't see the dance moves, but I think that the outfits are, are Super cute. perfectly in line with, like, what her br stated brand is already. I didn't find them to be, like, shocking. No, 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 no. But They're not shocking. also a good... It was good that she's talking about her 21st birthday to remind people that she is 21, because right. I just always think of her as 16. Yep. And I need to like get it in my head that she's 21. Agreed. I also have like a crazy idea for Olivia Rodrigo. I think what she really needs to do, like honestly, I think she needs a drastic haircut. Oh, that's that's always a great way to mature. Yeah, I think that it would... She has like teenager high school she hair. She has teenager high school hair that's like down... Like that's what I had at that age. Well, at 16, like down to your butt. You want the longest hair possible. Curl, curl, curl. But I think she's like getting, you know, very into high fashion. She goes to the Met Gala. I think it would really sophisticate her up and also remind people like, who she is because she kind of has this very like young looking body I think if she had this like I don't know what the haircut would be but I think if she had like a a severe haircut like a drastic one it might it might make a difference yeah that's a good call yeah that's just where what I've been thinking about lately I actually think that's very good advice thank you I love a haircut yeah not not for me do as I say not as I do cut Turdy's hair off in her sleep uh if either one of us needs a haircut it's you so I'm getting one next week <laughs> I'm excited for you thank you so um yeah lives tour it looks great i think I'm gonna, i mean if i can get tickets i think i'm gonna go my husband you will go. like hold a gun to my head you guys are like classic olivia rodrigo who should be going to her show the two of you date night i, I mean it would it's not really a date night when like your husband's mistress is on stage oh does he love her like that no actually he like loves her music i actually she's think not he, his celeb crush i think if he walked past her in the street like he might not even know it was her like he's so i like he loves the art he loves the art who's his celeb crush ask him like one time i asked him and he said i feel like actually hold on is it, i don't want to start a fight ben, who is your celebrity crush question mark and don't be a freak just answer he's gonna say you right no that's why i said don't be a freak just answer i feel like over the years i've asked him and only two times he's given me like a, a real yeah. answer and both times like it was like random and, and i feel like i forced it and he like doesn't stand by it because i have a vivid memory of him one time saying that his celebrity crush was emmy rossum okay and, and he was probably like 10, 10 years, years ago, ago when we were watching Shameless and he would like right now deny that he ever said that. And then I do feel That's like- That's a good one though. That's respectable. I do feel like another time he said Mila Kunis and it's just now dawning on me that he chose two Jewish girls. Like uh, not even on purpose. He wouldn't have known that. And that makes me feel so good. Yeah. It's not like so far off from what he got. Yeah. That's nice. I really have to go to the bathroom. You keep having to go to the bathroom in the middle of the show. I know. Should I hold it? Like do you think how much more time do we well, have? Fifth and final story will be short. It's a sh like it's not- Should I leave this in? Yeah, leave okay. this in. It's not like groundbreaking 
you know, thought-provoking story. Actually, it will inspire a little debate. Can your bowels handle a little debate? They actually can. Okay, just go. All right, fifth and final. Fifth and final story. Kim Kardashian's son, Saint, walked out with Lionel Messi ahead of Inter Miami's tie game against LA Galaxy, um, which was sweet, but then sparked some debate mm. about, you know, if nepotism him, like what money can buy that it should have yeah. gone to a, a less fortunate child um, well it wasn't like this it wasn't something that was up for auction like well people think like she paid to get him on oh god i actually just bit the lipstick is it in my teeth just a little bit how it's just like right here why are you malfunctioning where is it it's gone oh oh no well, then it's There's under. a chunk of lipstick. Ew. Oh, weird. Is it all over my teeth? No. Okay. Oh, my God. Sorry about that. Um, so when they say it should have gone to a less fortunate child, what's it? Like, it's not anything that you can do. Like, it wasn't like something she... Like, ever, like oh, should we give it to this kid with cancer or sane? Like, it wasn't one or the other. Yeah. Do you know what it's I mean? just like her established connections, like, made give, right. gave her a position where she could get this for him now do i think this is weird yes why like i don't know this is what soccer players do they walk out holding hands of kids for every game oh i'm sorry wait i have to start the whole conversation over again i didn't know that it should have gone to a less fortunate kid <laughs> didn't you you saw that like in um i feel like it was in david beckham's documentary they were always walking out with kids and whenever i see like soccer stuff they always walk out with kids it's like a weird thing that they do in I've soccer. never seen that. It's a weird thing they do in soccer. I don't know why that they do it. I don't know who these children are. I don't know if it's the same kids for every team. If like every team. Oh has my god, Ben's celebrity crush. I'm vomiting. Who? He said with a gun to my head, Sydney Sweeney. You're disgusting. That's fucking hurtful. I don't think that it is. She's the classic answer right now. Be creative. Yeah, it's just not creative. Fine. Mine's Glenn Powell. Beautiful. It actually can't be because I'm like kind of friends with Glenn yeah. Powell. Yeah. So like that's twisted. I don't know if I mentioned them before. No, you have. Don't worry. I feel like I haven't. There actually. might be someone who doesn't know though. You know, I, I'm, like I'm actually really tight. I wouldn't say really tight actually. I'd say I'm like friendly with Glenn Powell. Friendly. Yeah. Like if we saw each other in a restaurant, we would say hi. Great. Like would he invite me over to his table to sit and have a drink? Honestly, maybe. Like I'm so much fun. I is, would invite me is over. Is he closer with Ben than he is with you? Oh, that's a good question probably. I think they just played golf together when we were in Mexico, so. Like, yeah, that's, you know, on the links, shit goes down on the links. Maybe, and maybe that's why his celebrity crush is now Sydney Sweeney. Yeah, because he has an in. Yeah. Okay, thinks, back to the Nepo walk. I need to change my celebrity crush, by the way. Like, Who cares? John Mayer, like, that's what I always say. I'm like, so Yawn. over it. That's less original than Sydney Sweeney. Agreed. And not to be so rude and like, va like vain, but like, he's not looking that good these days. Like, well, the thing is about, well, it depends what kind of person you are. But if you have a crush on someone, like, it should be... 360 and not just about looks so like if you loved his like music a and his celebrity soul. i don't know these people like i don't know like you but their personality too like oh they're cute and funny who's your celebrity crush constantly changing honestly jason siegel's up there yeah because you like like he's funny yeah yeah his personality yeah yeah every time john like mayer talks like john, no i feel like every time like john his, mayer talks it's literally like stop <laughs> i feel like you like his personality he says no. like no actually i don't no no it was just about looks yeah yeah duh. and music and music, yeah, and like, yeah, music and looks. Music, I feel like his music is part new movie, not music and lyrics, music and looks. I feel like his music is part of his personality. Do you know what I mean? Like, his, like really, I actually disagree. I feel like he says such profound things in his music, and then he talks, and he's just like weird. <laughs> like, yeah, it I never translate. find those sentiments reflected in his personality. Yeah. Who is your celebrity crush? Elon. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> Facts. And that one's like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's and it. And he's changed his looks over the years. Like he looks different he, now. The thing is, he's not not handsome. I don't even know what he looks like objectively. He's not not handsome. He's not gorgeous. No, no. It's not about looks. No, it's good, Jackie. He's like, he's gettable. You can get him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I went to the bathroom because like, then I would be rushing through this conversation. Yeah. So who's your celebrity crush now? I don't know. Drop some comments. Like, who do I say, like, is hot? Who is she always obsessed? Charles Melton? Honestly? Yeah, he's so hot. 
That's a good one. I think Charles Milton's my celebrity crush, like of the moment for sure. Of today. Of this year, because he's like kind of like having a good year. Of this episode. And then there are people, of course, I find handsome, like Austin Butler, Jacob Lordy, but like, what am I, 12? Like, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Like, I'm more mature than those two being my celebrity crushes. They're too handsome. Like, yeah, no, it's like, that's like Sydney Sweeney. It's like it's the not original. Real. It's not real. It's not real. There's too much like, competition. Get real. Let me think. Who is my celebrity crush? Yeah, like the Jason Siegel. I feel like people used to say Jonah Hill, but like. Who? Literally, literally who's that? Remy. That's Remy. her celebrity crush. Remy Vader? Is it Re- really? That's her celebrity crush, yeah. I was just texting with her this morning. Hold on. Ask Not her- me texting a thousand people. Who's your celebrity crush? <laughs> like, what, like, what am 12? I, 16? Yeah. <laughs> um, who is your celebrity crush? Question mark. Was it ever Jonah Hill? You can't plant the seed. Oh. I mean, even though that would help my cause. Okay, I asked. Anybody else who I'm gonna text? <laughs> like we know who Margot is. She says hers is like Miles Teller, Hugh Jackman. Tim McGraw. She's so weird. <laughs> um I like I want I want a new celebrity crush. You know, and I want to have a really good too, answer. I feel like it's people's like celebrity crush, like Morgan Wallen. Honestly, you know who's kind of my celebrity crush these days? Like David Beckham. That's a good one. Like You're daddy. Like 20 years late. Yeah, but no, but but then like this well of course like I, he would have been my crush when he was like at his you know youth peak but like him being like dad energy and, and husband energy like that's the energy I find attractive not somebody mm-hmm. who dates a million girls that's why like Jacob Elordi like he's too young and hot right now like yeah someone you're who's, just in a different stage of your life I'm attracted to people who are like settling down yeah who live a slower life yeah and that's David Beckham the dad version mm-hmm. so that's someone I would let me see if she answered me I don't even know anymore Say, who did it used to be? Who did it used to be? I just want to ask her, like, was it was it ever at any point Jonah Hill? Fine. Let's just cut to the chase. Was we need it to ever end- at any point Jonah Hill, question mark? Because we need to end the show. Right. And, like, we're getting stuck in the dumbest conversation. I'm glad she's by her phone. She's typing already. Yeah, she's on vacation. So, like, she, I knew she would answer. She's typing. Yes! Why? Such a long story, comma. Make sure to listen to the toast today. Oh, I thought you were going to ask her why was he your crush. I would never like judge. Like people are attracted to who they're attracted to. Yeah. I'm sure some people would be like, ew, John Mayer, like get a grip. I'm sure people will be like, ew, ew, Elon. I think a lot of people. <laughs> You're wrong for that. No, they're wrong for that. I, please help me. You guys know me better than I know myself. Like who's my celebrity crush? They know, you know? Yeah. What do you value? Like, would you and want- And please to- don't say Ben's Hoffer celebrity. Like, please. <laughs> no, no, You're going to be blocked if you say that. <laughs> blocked. What, do you value like uh, would it, could it be a comedian could it be like a musician I'm not um, a business person I'm not partial like I, I don't care what they do for no, a but, living as long as they're rich okay and if they're celebrity and they're. you want a celebrity a famous person yeah it could be a famous businessman it could be a famous anything famous athlete Fam- yeah would you want an athlete what about Aaron Rodgers for you no I kind of see it no. I kind of see Turdy and Aaron no like if i'm gonna okay now that we're going down this <laughs> and by the way like saint <laughs> thank you saint for this conversation if i would ever like have a dream athlete like scenario like i would oh i'm sorry i know who my crush is joe manginello so good joe manginello is my celebrity crush i'm so glad we got to the mind of that because what i was gonna say was that like if i'm gonna date an athlete i want the biggest one like i just want to know what it would be like to be so tiny and the like rock like somebody who's 600 pounds literally um so it wouldn't be Aaron Rodgers. It wouldn't be a quarterback, honestly. Like, yeah, they're a little small. It would be like a defensive lineman. I don't even know what the word. Jason like, Kelsey. No, I, that's actually a good celebrity crush for someone. Like, if that's your answer, because he's like handsome and big, but has a great personality. Family man, family values. No, it's the three sixty. Yeah, yeah, but like hard no for me. Okay, he's like not my type physically, and also like no, I'm not. He's saying kind for of like you. shy and like fame averse, and I'm not looking for someone like that. Okay, but if you had to date. Travis or Jason? Travis. 1,000 percent. Who would you date? Well, date meaning like spend time and have conversations with. But still, Travis, yeah. They're both They're both nice. They seem like nice guys. Yeah. Joe Manganiello. And by the way, so random because we watch so much TV. Do you know what I learned this week? Joe Manganiello is the host of Deal or No Deal. S- Deal or No Deal Island. Island. I saw a story about that. Like uh, the headline was Joe Manganiello channels four different people as host of deal or no deal island like talking about who he gets inspiration from and i'm like i must have misread that and i i 
just scrolled on by because I just figured I read that wrong. Jackie, I was so confused. I'm like, is that my husband on TV? And it was. He's working hard for you. He's not going to rest on his laurels. No, and that's one of those jobs that pays amazing. Actually, not to promote the good guys, but the good guys actually just recorded an episode with Harry Mandel. And when Ben was done, he was like, so impressed by Howie Mandel because Howie Mandel was like an integral part of getting that show off the ground and he doesn't host it anymore I don't think but he's still like a producer and he was telling them all about like the business and it's, that's like one of those shows that makes people like that people retire off of so hopefully Joe and I can retire when he's done with Love uh, Love is Blind Island whatever it's called uh, Deal or No Deal Island Deal or No Deal Island yeah and to be honest back to this St. West thing like I really like I don't care like I don't I don't have a thought on like should it have gone to him or, like I like I genuinely don't care when I saw it I saw it before like the controversy and I was like oh that's so cute and it's like Kim using her power like for the coolest experience for her son and if it does rotate out for every single game all the time and it's not just like the same kids all the time like other kids will get to experience it too you know what I mean like it's just one walkout and also it's not like th something that's going to change your life like okay I guess if we're gonna like let's if we're gonna analyze it, when I saw it on her stories, cause that's how I like figured it out, I actually thought it was weird. But I also didn't know that like the kids were a, parting, a part of the walkout. Like I didn't know that was a thing Kids either. are a part of a walkout in soccer for every game. So like, why not Saint one yeah, time? One time, yeah, no, I agree. If he does it every single time, yeah, that's like not fair and. Yeah. That's not fair. But one time, like he loves soccer and he genuinely loves soccer. It's not like he's a kid who doesn't appreciate this. Right. Like this is the coolest moment for him too. Yeah. Like I, I just don't care, you know? No, I just don't care. And like, okay, so say another kid got to walk out like and had a cool moment. Like, great. Amazing. It's just a moment. And you know what I believe? Mm. I believe the children are our future. Well, that's Teach the darn them well truth. and let them lead the way. Whenever I sing that song, like I... Who do I feel like? Jenna Maroney. Maroney. I gotta watch 30 Rock again. We gotta go. Yeah. Reminder, the new collection drops tomorrow morning. So before the next episode, like there will be merch at Shop Toast. We won't let you forget. Like, we won't let if you, you forget. Have, if you have a phone, you will know. 10 a.m. Tuesday morning, shoptoastmerch.com, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Crewnecks, sweatpants, t-shirts, mugs, hats. Be there or be lame. Lame sauce. Love ya. Bye. Bye.